Here is the sixth part of the problem. Is it true that when f of n is big O of g of n, g of n will always be big omega of f of n? We need to prove or disprove this implication. So as always, let's start with what's given to us. f of n is big O of g of n. This means there exists a positive constant c such that for all values of n that are larger than some threshold, f of n is going to be bounded from above by a constant multiple of g of n. And we are asked to prove whether there exists a constant k greater than 0 such that for all n larger than some threshold n sub k, g of n will be bounded from below by a constant multiple of f of n. So if, if you are given this, Does this necessarily hold? So whenever this is true, is it always true that g of n is big omega of f of n? Well, to transition from what's given to what needs to be proven, let's reverse this inequality. If f of n is big of g of n, there exists a constant c greater than 0 such that for all n greater than or equal to n0, g of n or c times g of n is greater than or equal to f of n. So, so reversing the inequality brings us one step closer to what needs to be proven. Moreover, the coefficient of g of n here is 1 and f of n has an, a, a coefficient that's not 1. So let's let's make let's uh, move this c to the other side, and let's make this g of n greater than or equal to one by c times f of n. Now the form of this inequality is very similar to the form. Of, it's basically identical to the form of this inequality. If we take k to be 1 by c. So, we can say that based on what we are given here, there exists a constant k greater than 0 such that for all n greater than or equal to the same threshold n not, we not, we don't need to change the threshold g of n will be greater than or equal to k times f of n. Right? So, instead of the constant being c, the constant is the reciprocal of c now. And just as there exists a constant c such that f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n, there also exists a constant k such that g of n is greater than or equal to k times f of n. So with the same threshold n0 and by taking the reciprocal of the constant, we end up with this claim starting from this claim. And so we have proven that if f of n is big O of g of n, g of n is going to be big omega of f of n. So we did this informally earlier where we said that if f of n is big O of g of n, the ratio of f of n and g of n must be either 0 or some constant greater than 0. 
because for f of n to be big of g of n, f of n must either grow at the same rate as g of n or grow at a smaller rate than g of n. So those are the two cases here. Either f of n grows at the, at the same rate as g of n or at a smaller rate. And for g of n to be big omega of f of n, the ratio of g of n to f of n needs to converge towards either infinity or some other constant k, k prime greater than 0. So if the ratio of f of n to g of n is converging to k, the ratio of g of n to f of n will converge to 1 by k. And if the ratio of f of n to g of n is converging to 0, the ratio of g of n to f of n will converge to infinity. Or putting it in a, a more informal way, if f of n is growing at the same rate as g of n, and thus f of n is big O of g of n, then one can also say that g of n is growing at the same rate as f of n, and so g of n is big omega of f of n. Likewise, if f of n is growing at a smaller rate than g of n, and that's the reason for f of n being in big O of g of n, then one can say that g of n is growing at a larger rate than f of n, and for that reason, g of n is in big omega of f of n. What we have done here is we've used the definition of big O and big omega notation and prove this claim without using limits in a completely formal way.